is Alan, Electric Race Technologies. I'm doing a video tutorial on how to install the ASI BAC kit from ERT into either a Segway, which is what we have here, or a Surron. I mean, they're essentially the same bikes. But yeah, let's get started. First thing you want to do is you want to remove the battery. Even before then, you want to remove the, or turn the key switch to off position. Remove the key. Then we're going to open up the side cover here. Might need two hands for this. Okay, so next thing you want to do is you want to remove the battery. But first, set the breaker to off position. Or unplug battery connectors from the battery itself. We're going to pull the battery out, like so. Just like that. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is we have to remove the stock controller. So we have to remove this bolt here, this bolt, these side bolts here possibly remove the bash guard just to remove the stock controller okay so here we go So that's the top bolts removed on the controller. Remove the side bolts. Okay, so this may be slightly more difficult than I expected. Yeah, so these bolts are on there pretty good. Pro tip right here is since sometimes you get bolts that are hard to take off, I like to use a wrench right here for leverage. Just like this. Do have to apply a bit of force but eventually it'll come loose. So let me loosen these two bolts, one on each side. Okay, so right now I'm just loosening the bash guard. Don't forget to save this piece. Okay, so I'm gonna loosen the other side now. Here we go, so here's the other part. Well, forgot to loosen this by hand. Okay, so for real this time. The bash guard was the final there. bits as far as removing the stock controller goes. You have to remove this plastic piece right here. There's these two bolts. So once we unbolt these two, the controller should just come right off. All right, here we go.
one. Yep, it's one bolt. Okay, here's the second bolt. Tool I'm using is a Makita or Makita. Electronic screwdriver, seven points of volts. Packs a lot of punch. In case you haven't noticed, there's a stock controller right there coming loose. Okay. Okay, so with the stock controller unbolted, you'll see these leads here. With five wires. Those are the motor cables yellow, green, blue, and red and black. Those are from the battery leads. So we have to unbolt those right now. Also, it'll probably be a lot easier. We remove part of the, I guess the fairing or the lower part of the bud guard that's attached to the stock controller. There's just two Phillips Phillips bolts. off pretty easily yeah at this point we have to loosen these by hand because the driver just won't do it You just have to loosen these by hand and then we use our tool or electric driver to remove these bolts. There's one. Make sure that these don't touch. So let me get some tape. So I went to grab some electrical tape. I'm gonna wrap these right here. Just in case. I mean you never know. Okay. There's two. Let me shift the camera a little bit. It's about almost 10 o'clock here, 10 p.m. Been a busy day at work. You know, getting controllers ready for all you guys. So the main leads are free. Now, it's easier at this point if we remove the ignition barrel from the bike. Now, we do have to remove the battery tray or battery cover, which we have to remove these pins right here, these cotter pins. So now to remove these pins here, it's a little difficult because you need to just spread them apart. I'm going to use a plier. Now there are other tools you can use, but that's what I'm going to use. easy, but the idea is you just have to pop this pin out 
pop it off the grooves here. And of course this bolt By come right this pin out. It's a pain in the dick. Probably struggled with it for 10 minutes maybe. Probably not using the right tool either. It's much better. Here we go. Paint in the dick. Now we can remove our battery cover tray. Now we gain access to the ignition barrel. We just have to remove these two bolts right here. Okay, so I removed the ignition barrel bolts. We can now pull out the ignition barrel. You can see all our wiring is now exposed, which is good. That way we have more room to work on the bike. So what I've done here is I started pulling out some of the wiring, which will make our life easier. Okay, so to remove the stock controller, we have to get the connectors out, which is right here. In order to do that, we have to remove this piece, which is held on by a bolt here. As well as the other side. I have to cut the zip tie here that's holding the power leads. So we'll do that now. Okay, so to remove the bracket from earlier, we have to remove the bolts from the inside in the battery compartment. So I decided to use a right or angle ratcheting tool. off fairly easily. Yeah, I can already feel it coming loose on the other side. Once the bolts have been loosened from the inside, this will now be free. So now you should be able to pull the connectors out to free the stock controller. But of course, the bike's always a pain in the dick. So you may have to actually move the horn. Christ. Let's see what we can do here. I'm actually going to loosen the horn slightly by loosening this bolt up here, which is being stubborn. Okay, it's coming loose now. Okay. I'm not going to remove it. I'm just going to loosen it. So I can move it all the way. Okay, perfect. Okay, good. So now we can move these connectors around. I mean, that's really most of the work anyways. Just removing a stock controller. What I've done here is I'm lifting the cable here, the stock controller to relieve the tension. I'm pressing the connectors down where the horn would normally go. So that way, I can hopefully free some of the connectors here. It's very tight. Okay, that's one. Oh, okay, there we go. There we go. So I can see the connectors now. To warn you, this is a pain in the dick. It's definitely a pain in the dick. 
Okay, so it's one, two, the remaining connectors up here. Okay, there's no really any trick to it, you just have to. Wait, there's a that. trick that I did. So where the horn goes, I popped two of the controllers out of this hole to make room so I can wiggle the final remaining connector out from the frame. So now this is the final remaining connector. So here, unclip. Here we go. So now the stock controller is free from the bike. Completely free. So the next thing to do is we're gonna install our mounting brackets on our BAC controller. So here I've got the upper mounting bracket. Here's the lower mounting bracket. We're gonna loosen Three bolts here. So it looks, looks like they're hex. So be right back. So let's loosen up these bolts right here. There's one. There's two. Here's three. install the upper mounting bracket. The controller faces outward like this. Fix the camera angle. So it goes on like this. So now we have our upper mounting bracket fastened on. I'm gonna tighten it just a little more. Just be on the safe side here. I'll have to drill these right here to make sure to modify the, the file in the future. So currently I'm fastening the upper mounting bracket here. Make sure that's nice and tight. It just seems like it definitely is. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Do the same for the bottom.
Okay, make sure these holes line up. Okay, unfortunately these brackets are a bit too thick. So I looked them after up. I drilled these a little bit, they seem to go in much better now. So definitely I will make revisions to the mounting bracket. So by the time you're watching this video, all this should be fixed. Looks good. Looks good. Feels good. Rock solid. So these right here. This is where, if you have the four thousand, this will, you know, fit flush with your stock controller mounts. But since we have eight thousand here, you'll need these extension plates. So let me get, let me get the proper bit so we can fasten these. So now I've got the proper bit. Now to fasten these extension side plates. Okay, so that's one side. Fitted. Let's do another side. And I've got to admit, these are not the best, you know, uh, side, you know, plates, extension, but there will be improvement made in the future. So don't worry. So now we got our, our mounts you know, properly fitted. Now we can mount this bad boy, shall we? Let's do it. All right, so we will be reusing these two nuts right here, or bolts, to mount the back controller. So I'm gonna remove these two nuts right now. You can actually remove Tilt sensor right here. So let's disconnect this. Get this out of the way. And I'm going to remove these two nuts right here. It's just nuts, if you ask me. Okay, I need to get another tool to keep the signal Allen wrench to hold the bolt in place while I remove the nut. So it comes off pretty easily. Let's do the other one right now.
Okay. I'm gonna loosen these by hand right now. So it's one. It's two. Okay, great. Okay. Now we can mount the controller. Before we mount the controller, we have to insert the wiring loom connectors into the controller. Really easy. I mean, just literally push it in place. You'll hear a snap. Now we have to install the motor cable extension cables by moving these nuts here. So in this order, it's going to be green, yellow, and blue. Fairly easy. I mean, we just take our socket tool, loosen these. Now in this order, left to right, we have green, yellow, and blue. In case you're curious about these cables here, we actually process these beefy eight aug cables in-house we cut them strip them crimp them with the heavy duty marine lugs So make sure they're nice and tight. Might also be a good idea to start bolting down these lugs to the terminal block, which I will do right now. So take the Phillips bit. Set this to speed. It's a really nice tool, by the way. Highly recommend you pick one up if you don't have one. This one costs about $200 US. Well worth the money. If you don't want to spend that much, you can also get... There's a Matibo or formerly called Hitachi. Well, I can't really bolt these up because we're gonna do that while we mount the controller. Okay, so first things first. Let's get our wiring done first before we mount the controller. So first, I'm going to bolt the power leads, power terminals to the BAC controller. So I'm going to wrap electrical tape right here to give us more room to work with. Make sure your breaker switch is flipped to the off position and the battery is removed. You always want to do that before you work on electrical. So there's positives. There's a negative lead right here. Be right 
go back and get my tool so I can fasten this. So this one back. The socket tool. Just want to straighten this out right here. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight, but I'm a perfectionist, so it has to be straight. Okay, good. So now, so the motor cables here, I'm going to attach that to the terminal block so we can get my tool. So this part may be a little tricky. Loosen these bolts as well. Okay, so I removed all the bolts from the terminal block. And now I'm going to bolt the motor extension cables together with the cables from the motor. Now, personally, I like to stack the lugs on top of each other like this. That's because I believe doing it this way, you get better contact. Therefore, less resistance. Especially, you know, especially when it comes to the motor connections, which is seen very high current output. So the less resistance the better, definitely. So I'm just gonna do this for all three lugs or all six lugs rather. So once you're finished it should be like this right here. Lines are stacked on top of each other. I got these two cables right here on the BAC harness. I like to run these through the frame upwards up through here. So that's what I'm doing. Too much really to it. I just snaked these cables through the frame. I just feel it'll be a lot cleaner this way. We're getting pretty close to the end of our wiring here. You see these three connectors here, you've got an eight pin. You can ignore these right here. A nine pin connector from the Surron or Segway. So pretty straightforward here. We're gonna connect eight pin from the BAC loom to the eight pin up here. Make sure snaps in place. Yep, snaps in place like that. Nice and tight. And the nine pin, which is right here. Just like this. It's a little tricky because, well, just, it's, it's tricky, it's just how it is. Okay, reason being is because they got this stupid locker here. So I'm gonna have to check that out, see what's going on here. So I managed to press 
this connector in pretty securely. That's because I had to remove this lock right here on the connector on the PC harness. It's not a big deal, it's, it's just a lock. Okay, so now, I'll reconnect this because I accidentally forgot. I put this connector through the hole. So now I gotta, you know, back it out, move it under, under here. So now I'm just gonna reconnect this until it clicks securely. Yeah, pull on it, it's not coming out. That's how you know it's secure. Here's the fun part. I'm gonna start pushing these connectors back into the frame. So I'm gonna pull this out through the hole. That's where the horn usually goes. So as I'm doing this, the connectors will actually you know, pull upward into the frame uh, much easier. Push upward as much as you can. I'll make the wiring clean as possible. And of course we can pull the rest of it. I knew that you should. Guys, so the way I managed to mount the upper mounting bracket is by actually reinstalling the tilt sensor. So these two bolts right here actually bolt onto the tilt sensor itself. X160 with the ERT ASI BAC 8000 kit installed right here. Let's give some throttle and see how it goes. Plug and play, baby. So that's the final part of the installation. We're mounting a display right now. We'll be zip tying the dock for the X case onto the handlebar.